All right, so this is allhiphop.com here with Ronald Savage, a.k.a. B. Stinger. Um, you're pretty infamous nowadays, man, Yeah. you know, for what has transpired this year mm -hmm. um, with, uh, you know, the accusations that you've levied against Africa Bambata, who's uh, obviously a founder, founding father of hip-hop. Um, how have things kind of transpired? I mean, it's died down a lot since mm -hmm. the initial you know media blowout what's right. you know been the latest um the latest one is on the scene is just my phone is ringing off the hook you yeah. know as far as the explosion has already happened as they say that's what the media say when they contact me mm -hmm. so now it's just finding out you know the facts and everything um from me you know myself because a lot of the media they took the story and and you know they ran with it from the daily news mm -hmm. and that just exploded all over the world mm -hmm. and you know I wasn't really doing interviews with a lot of people so they didn't really hear it firsthand or you know anything like that they just took what they seen from other um, websites or other media and just slapped it on there yeah now it was pretty hot out there you know in terms of just you know it just felt tense mm -hmm. how difficult was it for you to even come forward you know um it was very difficult um you know because i was struggling with it for a long time ever since i was 15 years old and then recently like a few months ago i was just looking back on my relationships with women looking at relationships with my ex-wife and something just hit me and i was like you know I felt that if this didn't happen to me when I was younger, that I would probably still be with my wife or even my very first girlfriend, mm. you know? And it just took a toll on me and it just, I don't know, something just came over me after all that time and I just started tweeting, <laughs> like mm -hmm. Bambada molested me when I was younger. It was like, I had to, if I didn't get it out at that moment, I probably wouldn't even be sitting right here. That's how bad that 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 it hit me mm. after you know I was just thinking about a lot of stuff, you know, especially my wife. Yeah. If I may ask, how did it affect you? I mean, in that relationship or the other ones you mentioned, was it? Um. Growing up, um, I didn't like to be touched. Um, when people would touch me, not even girls, just anybody in general like would touch me, I would move, you know, because it felt like an uncomfortable touch. Um, growing up with women, I, I, I feel that I missed out on a lifetime because how other men, when they're in bed with their women, they get to snuggle and do all that good stuff. I missed out on that. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't snuggle in the bed. I didn't like it. It felt mm -hmm. it weird. Mm -hmm. um, when you touch me, it's like I had to brace myself just to let you touch me. Mm -hmm. um, any touching going on, I had to initiate it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a woman to deal with that over and over and over with their man, it's not cool. Right, right. Now, do you attribute that to the Bambada situation exclusively or was that something that was prior to or was that um, from that? That was absolutely 100% that Bambada thing. Uh -huh. um, when I was having sexual relations, um, it would stay hard and then it would go down because that flashed in my mind. Over and over, with, with each a girl with a right with, with a woman, yeah. yeah, right. And and you know, a, a, as a man who's not gay, that will mess you up. Yeah. And they messed me up totally my entire life. Mm. Have you done counseling? Um, yeah, I'm just starting to get um, counseling. Back in started back in I believe 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. You know, getting counseling, and I was I finally you know was able to talk about it. You know, to a therapist mm -hmm. because the experience you know that I dealt with the Bambada thing. You know, 
I don't want people to get it missing screwed. This isn't like the first time that I'm ever speaking about it. That's a myth, so don't believe that. Yeah. That's this is the first time I'm ever speaking about it publicly to the media. Right. But growing up, people knew about it because I told them. Right. And that was like the biggest kept secret in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um my thing is like this is not this is not new. Back then, if you talk about it, you wouldn't talk about it no more. Right. right. So for me to come forth and speak about it and for it to finally get out without it being rumored like it's been rumored, and now you put a face to someone who's finally come forth, that took a lot. Right. You know, because I, I, I struggled with it and it's funny because when I was tweeting, getting it out, I got a phone call mm -hmm. from Ahmed Henderson. Ahmed Henderson, that's Bam Bada's manager, and he's the manager from the Zulu Nation, and he's one of my closest friends. He asked me to take the tweet down. Right. Um, so I feel like if I'm asked to do something, then what about the people that wanted to come forth and say something before. Uh -huh. um, that's why I say this is God, Allah, or whatever you want to call them. Because as I was taking the tweets down, um, Star called me. And at that time, I wasn't really going to do it. And he said something to me that made me say, you know what, let's do this. He said, if you don't want to do it, we don't have to. Yo, I broke down when he said that. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't happen now, it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the truth behind hip-hop culture will never get out. Because if I didn't come forth, trust me, nobody else would have. Right. I, I think you're probably right about that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and the others that did come out were very compelling in a different way mm -hmm. to your story as well. Um, have you connected with those people? Um, the only person that I spoke to, and that's big up to Poppy, mm -hmm. that's um, Baby B.O., you know? And, um, you know, I, yeah, I give that brother big respect, you know? Because, you know, he's... That, well, I mean, that's just how Poppy is anyway. You know, he's coming gangster with it, you know? It, it, it's like, <laughs> do something to me, I'm going to do something to you, yeah. you know? And... You know, the, the video that Poppy put out, um, you know, I really don't want to speak about it. I let, you know, him really speak about it. But he took that down. Okay. You know, um, I had never seen the video. Um, after me coming out, that's when people had told me about Poppy's um, video. And it mysteriously popped back up. Mm. Now, what did you think about Bam Bada's denial he's flatly denied everything mm -hmm. um he's called you a liar mm -hmm. um how did you feel about that um when i heard it on the at lover show when he said he didn't know ronald savage you know i i was angry but i laughed at the same time because i knew that wasn't gonna stick very long because you can't change history. I was around BAM since I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And that lie didn't, like I said, didn't stick very long. Mm -hmm. You had Lord Jamal come out and totally said BAM Bot is a liar. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I respect Lord Jamal for that. You know, because... Yo, Jamal seen me and Bam together so many times. Like, you know, this is in the studio. You know, come, I used to work for Jazzy J. Mm -hmm. You know, back when they were doing um, 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 Masters of Ceremony, mm -hmm. um, Busy B, um, Showbiz and AG. You know, I was the one working those records. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so, you know, and that's just, that, that's after the, the, the younger part. But, like, how dare you say you don't know Bee Stinger when I'm on flyers with you? <laughs> you know? And then you see how the flyer 
popped up. Mm-hmm. You know? So I just take it even fast forward after the At Lover show when he doesn't know me. And then on the Lisa Ever show, you know me. Wow. So which one is it? You know me or you don't know me? Whatever lie you're going to tell, stick with it. Yeah. Because now people know that Africa Bambata, the founding father of hip hop, is a liar. Right. And that's forever to be known. Yeah. It's got to be tough also from a hip hop point of view, you know, because, you know, I'll be honest, I've heard these things. Mm-hmm. And I will say that it was hard to even entertain the thought um, as a rumor until mm-hmm. someone, you know, basically until you popped up. Mm-hmm. And then it was kind of almost like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I would say that people were reluctant to say anything in the name of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Would you say that? Um, I, I, I definitely um, would say that. Mm-hmm. And my thing towards hip hop, the entire hip hop, if you don't talk about this, you just as bad as the original founders of the Zulu Nation who hit this for years. Mm-hmm. So in actuality, if all the hip hop, you know, entities, if you want to hide this and not talk about it, shame on you. Uh-huh. What about KRS One? He came pretty rough with it, mm-hmm. and I mean, I, again, he's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. Um, and I'm probably you probably one of yours too, mm-hmm. being that you know he's KRS One. Mm-hmm. Um, what were your thoughts on on that? Um, you know, I have big respect for KRS One. You know, listening to his music, you know, he was definitely the teacher. But um, this, you know, he tried to clean up the statement that he put out, mm-hmm. and I say, if you believe that, you're a fool, mm-hmm. because his initial statement that he said, he meant that. So I look at it like he must know what's going on, and trying to protect it, just like everyone else in hip hop trying to protect it. Yeah. And, and I say that's messed up. And the reason I say that's messed up is because we have young kids out here. Mm-hmm. And molestation, being molested, is not something new. This goes on in the black community, but it's not talked about. Mm-hmm. And the voice of hip-hop is very powerful. And... For you not to talk about it, it's, it's a shame. On, or, 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 or make statements like Kara's one. Mm-hmm. That's like a slap in the face to every victim out there, like yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, you know, um, another reason why a lot of people believed you is, quite frankly, because you're a male coming out and admitting to these things, allegedly, that happened to you. Mm-hmm. And... Most men are not going to go on record and lie about something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I just, it's hard to, you know, now when I was on, uh, I was actually on, um, I was with Lisa Evers as well, Mm -hmm. talking about this with um, our mutual uh, uh, friend, I guess, Chris. Chris. Yeah. And uh, and I said, yeah, there's no way he's going to lie. But then the lawyer guy was like, kind of blocked me. He was like, Mm -hmm. I've seen people lie and cry and everything. Right. But I just, you know, I, I got to be real. I just found it difficult to believe mm-hmm. that, um, you know, as, you know, that someone would really, you know, just come out. Yeah, I, I like to answer both of that. The yeah. lawyer, the lawyer thing too. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm a father. I have full custody of all three of my kids, and I'm proud as a black man to say that. I have two sons. So, for me to fabricate some bullshit and have my sons hear it, how dare anyone say that? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even tell my kids about what happened. They found out by listening to YouTube, and they were in Jersey at their mother's house visiting 
visiting their mother at the time, and then my son called me and was like, why didn't you tell me? Mm. And I told my son, well, now you see growing up why I didn't allow y'all in anyone's houses and why I had y'all friends come over to our house because I didn't want my kids out of my sight. Mm. And when my kids are together, you always see all three of them together. And then they said that, um, I asked them how did their mother feel? And she, my son said that their mother said that, they was, that she was proud of me and that she told me that I had, should have said something about this over 20 years ago, mm-hmm. which she did, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. They say that um, the average victim, indeed, does, male victim, does indeed take upwards of 20 years or more mm-hmm. before they can, they can even do anything. Mm-hmm. The one thing you have been talking about is revamping the uh, the laws surrounding the statute of limitations. Right. Um, are you still working on that? Um, yes, I am. That And, and that goes back to um, Ben Bada's lawyer, how he's big and bad and bold, saying, um, oh, there are no charges. There, there was no charges today. There's no charges tomorrow. And this has never been charged. Mm-hmm. You know? You know, he can talk that. Because he knows the statute of limitations passed. Mm-hmm. But if the statute of limitations did not pass, I guarantee you on my kid's life, he wouldn't be talking so bold like that. Mm-hmm. He's only saying that, allegedly, because I can't speak for him. Mm-hmm. But to my knowledge and my common sense, mm-hmm. he's only saying that because he knows the limitations has passed. And I can't do nothing. And the other people who come for- have already came forth can't do nothing. Right, right. But... For him to talk bold like that, my mission is to find someone who's under the statute of limitations to come forth. And then let's see what he talks. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not going to stop until it happens. Um, You know, we we were working towards the um, the limitations. They've been trying to do this for um, for 10 years. And, um, you know, I I, I joined then. And... um, what happened was, you know, the, the state assembly, they had, um, I guess, to shut us up. You know, to me, it was like a, a bogus bill that they wanted to pass. Mm-hmm. And the, stim- the, the statute of limitations is 23. They wanted to make it 28. Mm-hmm. Um, I say 28 is still not enough time. Yeah. Um, because at 28, you're, trust me, and especially if, if it's someone popular, they're not going to say anything. Yeah. Look at the Catholic Church. They've been holding that in for so long. Yeah. Um, we're holding out until the age of 35 gotcha. at the minimum. Uh-huh. And when they do come back in session um, in January, I do think 100% that it's going to pass. Um, the governor is with us. Uh-huh. He's definitely behind us. Uh-huh. He definitely wants to see this passed. Um, but my thing is to, you know, the, 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 the other legislators, like, you know, they bow down to the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church congregate, congregation, you know, those are numbers, those are voters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's who they're going to cater to, yeah. you know. But my thing is it's a slap in the face that you don't, in the state assembly, you don't have the balls enough to bring this to the floor right now to be passed. But then you pass a law that says in restaurants on Sundays, you get to drink liquor two hours earlier. So to me, you'd rather pass a bill for liquor than over the protection of kids. So that just shows the world, the politicians in the state of New York, right. where their minds at, mm-hmm. that the black and Latino community is only worth liquor. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's deep. Um, uh, with with uh, with regard to Bam, did you feel any sense of vindication with people uh, leaving the Zulu Nation? Um, yes, I did. I, I, I did. Um, 
and 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 it's 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 funny that with the Zulu Nation, a lot of people they have to ask themselves common sense. You see how long it took the Zulu Nation to respond. If this didn't happen, I know I would have responded on day one. But you see how long it took them because behind the scenes, they were trying to get me to retract my story. Uh-huh. They were offering me money. They wanted me to sit with Bam. Uh-huh. But when I declined on all of that, that's when they put out the statement uh-huh. and said I was mentally challenged. Uh-huh. I feel that they owe an apology to every person who's mentally challenged. Uh-huh. They still haven't done that apology. They apologized to me and Poppy, the new leadership, and I'm thankful for that because that just shows that, you know, that they know the truth. Right. And another reason, and I'll put it out there, one of the reasons that they did put that statement out because current members of the Zulu Nation had come forth to the Zulu Nation to say, this happened to them too. Wow. So there's other people in the Zulu Nation that may come forward or ha- are just amongst themselves stating this? Well, I can speak for two. And one is um, a chapter leader. And one is one of my childhood best friends who's in his chapter. Mm. You know, I've already asked them to come forth. They're getting a lot of slack behind the scenes. And those two marched with me, along with a lot of other Zulu Nation members in the march. Mm-hmm. So that right there should say a lot, yeah. f- speaking for behind the scenes. What do you think about the state of the Zulu Nation now going forward? Um, it's still a positive... I mean, the foundation and everything is still positivity positivity peace love and unity and having mm-hmm. fun etc cetera, etc cetera. and they're an international force as well what are your thoughts on where they go from now to um the zulu nation they have a lot of good brothers you know and they have a lot of good brothers that did not know about this and unfortunately they got caught up mm-hmm. in this um, the Zulu Nation is a good organization. I was a part of that organization. But the code fourth under the name Zulu Nation, I think is tainted. I don't think you can come back from that. Mm. They say that Bam stepped down and stuff. My thing is, okay, maybe he did step down. But don't be fooled for one minute. Bam owns the name Zulu Nation. So... I feel that if they want to go forth, just change the name and get done with him f- forever and just move on and continue the great work yeah. that they do. Right. I think that's sad because Zulu Nation is an actual African tribe in, mm-hmm. you know, in Africa. It always hurts my heart to hear that sort of idea. But well, the new Zulu yeah. Nation or something yeah. has something that's in there right. that's separated from you know, the, the, the universal Zulu Nation or whatever. Yeah. So to keep that in there, you know, so that people still know that it's, it's the Zulu Nation. Right. But they need to separate the Zulu Nation of Bambada right. to the Zulu Nation of the great new leadership that has taken over. Right. Now, talk about this book, Impulse, Urges, and Fantasies, a little bit. I know it came out a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, has it, you know you know, resurged in light of the, you know, the allegations and what you've asserted, um, and, you know. Um, y- yeah, kind, kind, kind of, sort of. Um, you know, w- w- what I did, you know, want to explain, you know, to people about the book is that um, that book was part of therapy for me. Uh-huh. Um, when I was doing therapy, the, the, uh, the therapist told me that I should write down things that have bothered me and stuff like that. And when I went home, I kept writing and writing and writing, and it turned into a book, you know? And the Zulu Nation, the old Zulu Nation, will have you to believe that this book is all about Africa Bambada, you know, every last page, Mm -hmm. 
you know, don't believe that. Right. There's only two pages, or I think a page and a half, that's, that, that, that talks about actually what happened. Right. He's not worthy of being in my book like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the book is a great book. It's a great learning experience. Um, it, it talks about me when I was in the music industry, when I used to met, uh, uh, was the artist liaison for Dougie Fresh. It, it, spoke, it speaks about my two life you know, almost died two times, you know, in Jamaica, you know, when I was with Dougie, you know, it, it speaks about that. Um, it, it speaks about um, the group Snap. They made the record, I Got the Power. Um, so, you know, if people want to know the real truth of what happened with Snap and, you know, the downfall of Snap is in the book. You know, I was right there. I'm going to have to pick it up. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Definitely got to see what, what happened to Turbo B. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Chill Rob G, did yeah, they fight? Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah, all that is, all that is in okay, there. Okay. All that is in there, you know. Um, it, 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 what's in there is, is my, my first crush that I had on one of the female rappers, mm. you know, back then, you know, she she crushed my heart. I had a, I'm not even gonna say who it was. I was gonna uh, come say on, you got by as well, man. You done <laughs> dropped the mega bomb this year. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I was young, I had a crush on Moni Love. Oh, well, that's everybody. <laughs> man, I still got a crush on Moni. Moni, if you out there, yeah, I still got a crush on you. I, I had the <laughs> biggest crush on Moni. Oh, I loved she that you. girl, yo. I loved. I used to go to the parties just to see Moni. <laughs> Oh, and then man. back then, that's when I found out, you know, she was messing with Mike, with Mike from the Jungle Brothers. Oh man, see now you broke, now you breaking my heart. I didn't know she messed with Mike from the Jungle Brothers. Yeah, I, I mean, found that. I found that out in the club. Oh shit! And I cried in the club. Oh man! <laughs> All uh, that stuff is in the book. Putting Moni's business out in the street. <laughs> Big up to Moni. Oh shoot! But well, she was dope. She was just on Lady um, Ladies First at the uh, Hip Hop Honors. The yeah, day, she's yeah. out. Yeah, she got the uh, fountain of youth somewhere hidden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, man, it's mm. a lot of good things in that book. So I don't want people to think, you know, if you didn't get it, that, oh, my God, I'm just going to be reading about those band body things. No, man, it's only like a page and a half that speaks mm. about that. Okay. You know, it's other things, you know, my relationship. And, you know, naturally if that I didn't like to be touched. And it explains the whole thing with me, you know, with my girlfriends. And it's a lot of good things in, in, in the book. Okay. Well, look, I appreciate your time. Um, do you have any final words you want to say? Um, no, nah, no, nah, you know, if people want to find out more about me, they can go to my website, which is um, www.ronaldsavage.com, and then you can find out, you know, the things that I'm doing. And, um, you know, I have the organization, which is United Coalition Association, and I'm under that organization, you know, I'm going to do things about, you know, molestation and other great things, um, you know, to that. I have... Um, uh, I have an app, you know, um, uh, Milkshake Squirrel, okay. you know. <laughs> What's that? Milkshake Squirrel. You remember the the the, uh, the, the squirrel that was in the, the garbage can and it, it jumped into the garbage can and, and, and it took the milkshake out and it hopped out the that. garbage can. Yeah, this is over okay. by Madison Square Garden and it started drinking the, the, the milkshake okay. and then there's Pizza Rat. Okay. You know, so I have those two... Um, in the in in the game and it's like a maze game. Okay. okay. And you know you gotta you gotta get three milkshakes, go around the maze and, and, and get three milkshakes, and it's just all it's 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 like five different levels to the game. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna download that. I'm gonna download. It's, that. it's on um on uh the Google Play Store, so it's just for like the Android phones right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I won't. I'm iPhone. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> 